Hey everybody, Peter Zine here coming to you from the Denver International Airport where I am waiting for my flight. Uh, it's my last business trip of the year, so it's kind of exciting. Uh, anyway, it's uh, early December and the news is that in late November, a new project uh, for geothermal launched near Vegas. And by launched, I mean began operations, not just starting drilling. Um, it's Fervo Energy. It's backed by Google. Uh, we don't have any data on what their cost point is because, you know, it's Google and it's a pilot project. Uh, but Google has been sufficiently excited about it to go ahead and launch another project in Utah. Uh, the one that's in Vegas is only about three and a half uh, megawatts, enough for about 2,600 homes. So very, very small scale um, by really any power plant standard. Uh, but the next one's going to be 400 megawatts, which puts it up there with some of the larger power plants in the world, assuming that it goes to spec. Um, Geothermal is awesome where it works because you can tap uh, heat within the crust to generate steam and use the steam to generate electricity. It's green. It doesn't have any chemical issues. And uh, one of the best things about geothermal is you can use it either for surge or for baseload. You just decide when you're going to use it, which makes it a lot more reliable and dispatchable than, say, solar or wind would be because, you know, the earth is pretty much always hot. Um, that's part one. Part two, what, what makes this thing interesting is that it's not a typical geothermal project. So normally with geothermal, you're tapping something like a geyser or hot water or a hot spot that's relatively close to the surface, usually within just a few hundred feet. Um, but this is the first project that's been attempted, and so far successfully, uh, that uses shale tech to go after a different sort of geology. So rather than letting the earth put something that's up close to the surface, um, that only happens in a few places. It's almost exclusively in the Rockies. Uh, and as you guys know, the Rockies are not exactly densely populated. So geothermal with the old style is only providing about 0.4% of overall American electricity supply. But with the shale tech, you can drill down, in this case, 7,000 feet uh, into a hot spot that is nowhere near the surface. And that means, assuming this works and works at scale, that means we can do this everywhere where there's shale, where there's not geologic activity. Uh, you're not going to do this in the San Andreas Fault, obviously. Let me do a better job of explaining that. Um, the two things that make uh, shale technology really appropriate for geothermal and, you know, why it works in general is, number one, you've got really good acoustical detection um, by using some version of sonar. Uh, and you can bounce sound waves off of different types of formations at different levels within the formation and map them out from the inside out. Uh, that's how they know exactly where to go to the petroleum rich strata when they're doing oil and gas production and then second uh, drilling has advanced in courtesy of shale so you go down and then laterally uh, in order to access whatever the specific layer is and you can don't have to go in a straight line so it's like you can go up into like the fingers of a curved hand so you apply this to geothermal and really what you're looking are for impermeable zones that are really really hot and you can pick that up with the acousticals uh, so uh, by taking these technologies, you can go to the, the best, densest, hottest material possible in order to then run your liquid into it, which then captures the heat, which can then be used to generate electricity. That is potentially a game changer. Uh, one of the big problems the United States is going to be facing over the course of the next decade is a massive, massive shortage in electricity. Uh, even if we don't do the green transition, even if all we do is reshore a lot of manufacturing, to uh, deal with a post-China world, you're talking about conservatively expanding the power supply by 40%, 50% would make me feel a lot better. That includes processing for things like aluminum and lithium and the rest. You know, that's a lot of power. We haven't had that kind of power in <laughs> decades. The green transition would add problems on top of that. And so if we can take something like geothermal and existing technologies that are now off the shelf and apply them at scale in all 50 states, now you're talking about a very different sort of math uh, because these things can, in theory, come online pretty quickly. As of those of you who follow the shale sector know, it only takes 6 to 12 weeks to bring a uh, shale project online, and most of that is involved in the drilling and the fracking. Oh, that's exactly the technology we would be applying to geothermal. So obviously it's not a complete plug-and-play. Electricity is different from generating oil or gas. But the uh, the technology and the ways they can fusion are very promising. We're just waiting from Google to find out what the numbers are to know if this is economically viable or not. And that's the whole point of the Utah Project. Okay, that's it. Take care.